Hello and welcome back to the second part of my rendering the Cornell box in Renderman for Maya. Now, if you remember where we left things here, I'll just click the render button and go into it here. We'll see this is where things stood previously. Not looking bad. We're actually getting some um, reflected light. We're getting some color bleeding. Um, Definitely not a bad looking scene, but not quite perfect yet. There's a few things which I really want to fix with this. The first thing which I'd like to really fix is um, it's incredibly dark here in the corners of the room. The second thing which I'd like to fix is the actual reflectance of this white material, because it is a white material, is quite grey currently. And the third thing is I don't actually have any caustics coming through this glass sphere. So for the first first thing I want to fix is actually going to be quite simple to fix and it's going to be fixed through my rendered globals over here. Now in rendered globals under features we can see that we're ray tracing. Okay this is part of the calculations which we need to do in actual fact for the global illumination and the transfer of colors and light between different objects. Now if I hover over this max diffuse depth here we'll see the number of diffuse bounces for indirect illumination value of one is usually sufficient larger values are slower. In this scene, most of my materials are matte materials, and matte materials reflect most light through the diffuse channel. So I need to actually have a bit more bounces here, so we get some more light rays coming around. Now let's go back to it. Now you may have noticed I keep on going back to the um, to the taskbar there. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually set always on top here, which is going to make my life a little bit easier. And also, I'm going to open up the catalog, the catalog for it which is over here. So this is my initial render. And you can access the catalog by basically going to Windows and raise all and it'll actually open up the catalog for you. I'll need to open up this up again. So I'm going to re-render this just through through it itself. And I'll pause through some of my renders here so we actually get more time for doing other. Okay, so that's that render finished. And we can compare the two renders. This is the one with fewer diffuse bounces and with more diffuse bounces. Fewer and more. So you can see it is slightly brighter and the edges are slightly better around here. Now the next thing which I want to fix with this room, which will help the entire thing, is in actual fact the material. So I'm using a physically, physically plausible matte material here and I'm just going to worry about the white material here. I'm not going to worry too much about the red and the blue. And um, currently I've got diffuse gain set to 0.5. Now, as I hop over here, I get a handy tooltip as well, which says scales the diffuse response of material energy balance with specular is preserved automatically. What we're basically saying here is this is the amount of energy which is being reflected diffusely from this material. So it makes sense that both the diffuse and the specular added together would be equal to one. So we're not actually creating any energy when a ray hits it. But in this case, because it's only diffuse, I'm going to set it up to very, very high 0.9 five should be fine and I'll re-render I'll pause when I'm re-rendering again so we don't have to spend all our time watching it. okay so that's it almost re-rendered you can see quite a significant difference here and um, I'll have a look at my catalog here we'll actually see the difference between it. okay this was the first one this is the second one where I've actually increased the number of bounces and my third one where I actually have more um, diffuse gain for the material, for the white material. So the difference between here and here is quite profound, looking much more like a Cornell box should look. Now I must say I still get my shading rate still set to um, 2, so it's not actually a tremendous um, quality setting for this yet. So that's why we're still getting some shading artifacting up here. Now the next thing which I want to do is I want to get some um, caustic rays coming through here. Now at the moment no caustics are being calculated so the first thing I need to do is I need to go into my hypershade and whoops, let's just drop in a RMS caustic light. Now this in some ways is similar to the RMS um, GI light in that it's not actually dependent on um, position and it doesn't actually it doesn't actually illuminate itself it basically tells Renderman to use some of the lighting features of existing lights existing physically plausible lights 
So with this selected, it's important to actually right click and select objects illuminated by rays, which you'll see down here, it's actually selecting my whole scene here, which is one way I can do it. I can actually set various objects which will and won't be illuminated by rays. Okay, now let's just see out of the box as this renders. Let's re-render. And while I'm doing this, I'll just tell you, I know this result won't actually work because I need to set one other thing to actually get results from this. Um, previously, there were other ways of doing caustics with the old school methods of rendering, um, but this is actually a bit quicker and I like it. So we'll just see as it comes down here, reaches the last material, almost through it, and we're going to see that there won't actually be any caustics. If there are, I'll be quite stunned. No caustics yet. Now, what I have to do to actually get caustics working is I need to actually tell caustics to work in terms of my render pass. So my render pass here is my final render pass, and I need to say compute caching behavior, and I'm going to make a file for my photons. And how many photons do I want? These are my caustic photons, our general photons for the scene. So I have 10,000 photons. It's a good ballpark figure. I'm going to say calculate and cache this out to a file. So I'm going to call the first file marks caustics. And the general photon map is going to be um, global photons. OK, and let's render this again. Re-render it. I'm very hopeful this will work. It took me a bit of digging to actually find out how to get um, caustics working in Renderman. We're almost there. So obviously caustics can be either reflective or refractive. Um, they produce nice shinies. I always like nice shiny. Almost to the point now where we can see them. Can't see them yet. There is another reason, something I forgot to do. Something I forgot to do here is on this material, I need to actually add an attribute, a random attribute for caustic controls. This again tells it that that material is going to be working caustically. So I'm going to set my shading model here to glass. And let's re-render. And I'll just pause as we re-render. Always so many things to set, but the end results are worthwhile. So it's just starting to render. And, and pause. And there we have some caustics. So it is important to actually set the attribute there to have um, shading with caustics working for us. I'm going to leave things there for the moment. Um, hopefully you're finding these enjoyable and useful. Um, covering some things which actually tripped me up. I may actually redo some of these if people give me some feedback and say there's more material and different ways of working. Okay, so thank you very much and I'll catch you all again soon.